Welcome, happy Sunday. We're here at the Alexander Free Methodist Church, and I am glad you're all here. Those of you who are joining us online, welcome as, as well. <laughs> um, this is Thanksgiving Sunday, and um, it's just an exciting Sunday for each and every one of us, and it is the perfect time to be here. Um, a couple of announcements. Um, our uh, two boxes in the center here, we have uh, the regular offering box, and then we also have our box for the all-in campaign offering. So feel free to deposit your funds in either one of the boxes. Um, and then also, this Wednesday, there is no prayer meeting, okay, because this is a Thanksgiving Wednesday, so we usually like to have it off so you can be together with your family. So no prayer service this Wednesday. Um, and then also, this coming Friday, there is no uh, small group as well. We're in our holiday week, and but we are so glad you are here to join us today. I don't know if I'm on yet. Let me, uh, just a quick note. Uh, wasn't last week great with the all-in campaign? Hey, I, I, I don't, don't know everything, but what I do know is last week we had at least another $6,000 come in for all in. So we want to thank all of you who participated in that. Some of you are online this morning. So we praise God for his goodness. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So let's come to Jesus. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring them above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior and happy. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my 
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. for you today and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you Lord thank you Lord for all you've given to me for all the blessings that I With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with, with an asterisk heart, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched star, I will bless your name. Thank you, God, Thank for you, all the blessings in our life that we can see, that we can't see. Lord, every good thing comes from you. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome again. As we remain standing. <laughs> yes. That's good. As we remain standing, I want you to, I want to invite you to join me in prayer. Okay. Um. Prayer is one of my favorite things. It really is. Um, why? Because prayer works. When we talk to God, one of our best friends as well, um, he listens. And God is not only a God of miracles, but he is our defender. He is our healer, okay? And he is a promise keeper. And we need to believe that at 100%. Even during our prayer, sometimes when we pray, 
There's so many things that come through our minds, but we gotta keep our focus, remain focused, and believe that He answers prayer. He is a faithful God, and He is a God that is there whenever you need Him. And this is a moment when you can bring your petitions, okay? This is the moment of prayer. I want you to bring your petitions to God. I might have a list here in front of me, but bring your petitions to Him at this time. This is a moment for you to just surrender yourself to Him because He is faithful, knowing that He is faithful. Amen? Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing, right? So let's just do that. Pray without ceasing. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, thank you for today. Thank you for so many blessings. So many blessings that you have given to each and every one of us, our families, Lord. We see your, 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 your blessings every single day, Lord. We wake up every single day, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that we are able to come and worship your name. And even those online, we thank you for the social media extension that we are able to have so that others are able to worship with us. Amen, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen, Jesus. My personal prayer to you, Lord, is that we as a church continue to believe 100% in the power of prayer, not only because of its spiritual power, but because in the book of Matthew, you brought us into a relationship with yourself, and you told us to pray, Lord. Thank you for teaching us, Lord, and being there for us since the beginning, Lord. I pray for the pastor and his family, Lord. You know everything that a pastor has to go through, goes through, needs to go through, what he needs, his needs, his family needs, the church needs, and, and just everything that he and his family may struggle through, Lord. Be with him, Lord. Give him strength when he is weak, Lord. That strength that comes from up above, Lord. Guide him, Lord. Guide him and his family, Lord. I also pray for the church and thank you so much for the blessings, Lord. But we continue to pray for the building plans and, and the finances and everything we need, Lord, to reach that goal, to see that achievement, Lord. Keep us, Lord, in, within your hands, Lord. That situation, Lord, please guide it, Lord. Continue to guide every single person, Lord. I also pray for every single member and visitor, every single member of the church and the visitors that come across our church, Lord. Thank you for each and every person, Lord, each of their lives, Lord. I pray that you continue to be within their lives. You, you know what they're going through. You know what each and every person is going through, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you give them knowledge and, and, and wisdom to, to just come to you, Lord, and give them strength, Lord. I also pray for every petition that is here this morning, every petition that is within everyone's heart this morning, Lord. Be with each and every one, Lord. I pray for those who are sick, Lord. This situation that we are, going, we are we continue to go through this pandemic, Lord, those that have, have been going through this this COVID illness, those who are just sick with other illnesses, Lord, that you touch them at this moment, Lord, that you descend your, your hand and your Holy Spirit, Lord, and you just heal them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you, that, uh, that you continue to be with them, Lord. Help them feel your presence at this moment, Lord. And I also pray, Lord, for the many world issues that are going on, the discords, the government, world hunger, famine, peace. I pray for our leaders of the nation. I pray for our spiritual leaders, Lord, that you give them wisdom, Lord, to continue. Guide them, Lord, through every single thing, Lord. You know the situations. You know just every moment that they go through. Help us to live knowing that prayer really matters. May we continue to worship knowing that prayer really matters. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the world Rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. Be wrapped in 
himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how Age to age she stands, and time is in his hands, beginning at the end, beginning at the end. The Godhead three in one, how the Spirit Son, the Lion and the Lamb. the name above Translation, we're not quite as used to, but I believe God has powerful things to say to us today. Amen. Guys, um, we read this psalm on Friday night for a small group, and we had a really healthy discussion about the difference between the word fear and the word reverence for God. And I'd love to tell you more about that if you want to talk. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention before I read this is the word I was looking for on Friday night was absolutes. I couldn't think of that word. Absol absolutes are words like always, every, never, forever. So notice how when we speak with our, our, our loved ones, we're encouraged not to use those words because they're fighting words. But 
in this psalm, it describes the nature of God. And um, just think to yourself, you know, what do you learn about God as I read through this? Good morning, Laura. It says, Oh, my soul, bless God. From head to toe, I'll bless his holy name. Oh, my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. He forgives your sins, everyone. He heals your diseases, everyone. He redeems you from hell, saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy, a paradise crown. He wraps you in goodness, beauty, eternal. He renews your youth. You're always young in his presence. God makes everything come out right. He puts victims back on their feet. He showed Moses how he went about his work, opened up his plans to all Israel. God is sheer mercy and grace. Not easily angered, he's rich in love. He doesn't endlessly nag and scold, nor hold grudges forever. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, nor pay us back in full for our wrongs. As high as heaven is over the earth, so strong is his love to those who fear him. And as far as sunrise is from sunset, he has separated us from our sins. As parents feel for their children, God feels for those who fear him. He knows us inside and out. Keep in mind that we're made of mud. Men and women don't live very long. Like wildflowers, they spring up and blossom. But a storm snuffs them out just as quickly, leaving nothing to show they were here. God's love, though, is ever and always. God's love is ever and always. Eternally present to all who fear him, making everything right for them and their children as they follow his covenant ways. And remember to do whatever he said. God has sent his throne, has set his throne in heaven. He rules over us all. He's the king. So bless God, you angels, ready and able to fly at his bidding, quick to hear and do what he says. Bless God, all you armies of angels, alert to respond to whatever his wills. God bless all creatures, wherever you are, everything and anyone, God made by God. And you, oh my soul, bless God. Hallelujah. Amen. That was awesome. Clarion, can you please come up? Clarion's going to share with us four things uh, she is thankful for. Uh, you may want to be thinking of things that you're thankful for as well as she comes. Let's welcome Clarion. Come on. yesterday to share four things. I said to him, four? Only four? <laughs> so this week, we, hopefully all of us will be sitting next to our family and we'll be having a Thanksgiving dinner, right? And um, I just want to uh, uh, share with you um, some of the things that I'll be thankful for. I was born in, in a distant land called the Dominican Republic, <laughs> small island, um, in some time in 1900s as my kids call it. <laughs> Specifically, I was born in Santo Domingo, the capital city. I was the only child for seven years. It was fantastic. <laughs> I got many gifts and I got all the attention I wanted until my sister was born. And then Al followed. Al came after that. <laughs> we then, uh, my family moved to Rochester, New York, not because of financial need, but instead of a uh, request for a church plant, Hispanic church plant in Rochester, New York. I must say, Rochester, New York is a fantastic place to raise a family. Uh, it has, in my opinion, the best state, state's park recreation for your family is just great. Um, 
growing up every single summer, I don't know how my parents did this, we had a vacation to go to. Um, somewhere they always found something to take us to in the summer. I want to thank, I want to thank my parents, Clarissa and Alejandro, for their sacrifices that they made for us. By the, by the way, my name, Clarity, comes from them, Clarissa and Enrique from Ian. Many of you always ask me that, but that's where my name comes from. She made it up, so thank Clarissa for that. Um, thank you, Jennifer. Um, as I grew older, you know, when you are in that age, 18, 19, 20 years old, you always want to know what a, like your next stage is going to be like, right? You're always skittish. You don't know what the future holds. Uh, I was the same way. I have no template in terms of um, career. Right? For some reason, I was geared towards IT. That was I don't know how I don't know where I got that from. But um, I do remember reading when I was putting this together. I remember reading an article in my high school library of um, that the careers of the futures would be nursing and IT. I thought the current circumstances is fantastic that this is the fact, right? But for me, it was, can I, is this something that I could possibly do? I had no idea. I was just searching to see what my next step was going to be, what my career was going to be. Because I was a senior in high school. I didn't, had no idea. I only bring this up because of God's providence. Um, I talked to my guidance counselor, and he said, Clary, how about if you take a test? And I have to test to see what it is. Guess what came up? History, IT, and, and, nerd, and science. I wanted to do med, uh, medical science. Just things worked out, and I kept going IT. Um, as I struggled, you know, Sunday, my struggle, I grew with distinctly one Sunday going to Sunday school service and I had this really good Sunday school teacher slash youth pastor and I was struggling and praying what am I going to do what am I going to do next applying for colleges not having a clear direction and he didn't say this to me directly but he said this in Sunday school he said always choose God always follow God and that is an advice that stay stay with me for a long time and I want to thank, and I'm thankful for Sunday school teachers. It's a lot of work. And you don't know how, what the impact that you made on other people. <clears throat> um, as I graduated from high school and went into college, this were really trying times. Uh, just as a single Christian woman, many temptations and things like that. But. I always knew that God, I was in God's hand, and that he will always take care of me. Again, I want to be thankful for God's providence. Fast forward to 2003, I moved here from Rochester, New York for school. I wanted to work on my um, master's in IT, specifically in security. I went to DeVry University in Arlington. And I remember calling the church, and pastor answered. And he said, hey, come on over. We also have another Dominican girl here, Miss Jenny. And I said, sure. <laughs> I got, that Sunday, I got lost in the neighborhood. <laughs> I came late. But I do remember this distinctly. At the end of the service, I remember sitting all the way in the back of the pew. Uh, at the end of the service, someone came and said hello to me. And it was Gail Carter and gave me a huge hug. I would never forget that. I am thankful for friends. I am thankful for Gail Carter. Thank you so much, Gail, for showing your love to me. As life continued in, in progress and things like that, I, um, this is, I always remember, from, just from God's teaching. He will not forsake you. He will not forgive you. He will not give up on you. He will not stop loving you. He will not stop hearing from you. He will always carry you. In 2007, I was blessed to marry Frank Braxton. 
here, right here in this church. Um, you know, shortly after that, I think in 2008, we had that financial crisis. Everybody was impacted. So we were, were we. Um, Frank lost his job, and we had to do things to pay the rent and the mortgage. Um, I want to thank Frank for being married to me and for being such a man of God. As I was doing my uh, morning devotions, I came across Psalm 91. And it says to follow. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snares and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with the feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the petulance that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys the midday. A thousand may fall your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but you will not come near. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you will make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will thread on the lion and the cobra, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for, the, for he acknowledges me. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God bless you. What a great testimony. Come on, let's thank the Lord again for that. Uh, I, I just thank the Lord so much for you all, for the people that are here, for the people who watch online. Uh, you know, these are amazingly uh, challenging times for all of us. Can I get a big amen? Come on, they are. But God is good and God has been working for you. I thank God so much for you. I thank God for the setup crew. Let's thank all of them. Let's applaud again for the camera people. So um, this has nothing to do with my sermon, but it kind of caught my attention. I got several compliments on my sweater this morning, and um, somebody said to me, the sweater is very slimming. And my answer was, that's the plan. It's either that or exercise. So just so you know. Um, so uh, I want to begin today by sharing um, two stories that I heard this week. The first was this. I was watching uh, ESPN. Uh, Monday, kind of checking up on some of my uh, football teams that I'm interested in. And uh, they were talking about how this pandemic has affected uh, uh, the, the NFL. And they were talking about the pandemic generally. And one guy said to another guy, two things are flying off the shelves this week. Toilet paper and self-help books. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, the comment had nothing to do with football. But I thought that what this person said had a whole lot to say about the world that we're living in. 
I get the toilet paper angle, don't you? Um, been there, done that. We've lived with that in the past. We're living with that currently. All of us need toilet paper, probably not enough to be storming the grocery stores at this time. But what surprised me was the second thing that this person said. Uh, the fact that self-help books are flying off the shelves right now. They talked about going into a Barnes & Noble or a bookstore. The shelf was completely empty. So what that said to me was this. Our neighbors are not only looking to stock up on toilet paper, but our neighbors are starting to look for answers. I think all of us are starting to look for answers and for deeper things through this whole pandemic time. So that's one story, and it's significant. I'm going to make reference to it later. The second story I heard was this. Uh, it came from a sermon, in, sermon that w I was listening to. It kind of gave me this idea. And uh, in that sermon, the preacher told a story about a guy who was on his way home from work, um, and he was planning on going on a date with his wife when he noticed that his shoe was talking to him. You know what I'm talking about? The body of the shoe had become detached from its soul and was flapping as he walked. A while ago, I went to the Kennedy Center for a play last year, and in the middle of the play, that happened to my shoe. I could not get it. This is a, just a side note. D, if you're listening, you know what I'm talking about. So I could not get it back together. Tried taping it back together. Nobody in the Kennedy Center had duct tape. Tried ripping it apart. No, I could not rip it apart. So I walked out of the Kennedy Center with one shoe on and one sock. So that's how I went out. So that was this guy's problem. His shoe became detached and it was talking to him. So um, coming out of the metro, he noticed that there was a shoe repair shop directly across the street. And as he prepared to enter the shop, he got there just at the time that the owner of the shore was flip, flipping the sign around from opened to closed. And he took off his flapping shoe and he pleaded with the owner of this shoe shop, holding up his shoe with it flapping in the wind to see if he would let him into the shop, which the guy did. And the man said, you know, I so appreciate the time that you're taking to do this. I know you have to be anxious that you want to get home, you want to see your family. To which the shop owner said, I am home. And confused, the man said, you mean you live here in the middle of this shop? The owner said, no. You know, if you look to the back of the room, you look way to the back there, you're going to see a staircase. And that staircase leads up to my apartment. I live up there, but I work down here. Do you catch that imagery? In this world where toilet paper and panic and self-help books are flying off the shelves, we need to remember the words of that shop owner, right? We need to live up there, amen, and work down here. There's work to be done in our society right now. Not only are souls, S-O-L-E-S, -E coming apart, but souls, S-O-U-L-S, -S, are coming apart. We have been called to do the work, amen? We are down in the shop. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to offer something significant for ourselves and for everyone around us who are buying all those self-help books? People are starting to look for answers. What do we have to offer? So I suppose there are many ways to answer that question. But since we're only four days away from Thanksgiving, I want to suggest just one. It comes from the way we conduct ourselves in the middle of this time of national and personal crisis. It's from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. If you have a Bible, if you can open up to that. Uh, this has already been quoted a couple times in the service, and nobody knew I was going to be preaching from this, which I find kind of interesting. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. Paul is saying, in, in essence, this, my fellow followers of Jesus, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
Did you notice what he said? It's God's will that we rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. I believe God is strategically giving us an opportunity as a church. So right now I wanted to share one of these opportunities. This is not in my notes, but the Wednesday after Thanksgiving, we are going to be offering a, a teaching in the church, uh, and the teaching is going to be called Flocks and Blocks. Flocks and Blocks. So we want to find ways to better care for our flock in this time, and we want to start to care for our blocks. Amen? So one of the ways we're going to do that is we're going to be offering some training on a Wednesday night how to lead a Discovery Bible study. Uh, we're going to be doing that with probably about 15 people who might be here in present. We're going to have a sign-up sheet for that next week. Um, but it's for anybody who wants to learn to, to basically lead a small group with, with three or four people through this Christmas season. We're going to do four studies that are going to help us in our spiritual walk with God. We want to reach the flock, and we want to reach our blocks. So we're going to talk about how to do that. So that's just a little tool that we're going to be offering in the next few weeks. Right, as a church, right, these are challenging times, but I praise God for the way you guys respond every week and for the opportunities I believe God is giving us. So back to this subject of God's will. We're back to Thessalonians. I, I think when most of us think of God's will, we're either thinking in terms of geography or we're thinking in terms of a decision we may have to make. Should I pack up and move my family to North Dakota or should I stay in Alexandria? We frame that as a God's will question. Should I say yes uh, to that boyfriend I met and that boyfriend I'm dating? Should I say yes if that boyfriend decides to marry me or should I continue to look for more matches on Match.com? Is it going to be a yes or no question? So we frame it in terms of geography or job placement or decisions. Right or left, yes or no, may maybe, right? So let me suggest something much more profound this morning. And I think it's much more biblical. God isn't so concerned about whether you work at Target or whether you work at Walmart what he is concerned about is the person you are while you're on your way to making that decision. And he's more concerned about that person you are when you get there, whatever that decision is. God's will has more to do with character than geography or any particular decision you may make. It has to do with your character. So we get Bible verses like this, also from 1 Thessalonians. This is God's will for you, 1 Thessalonians 4.3 says, that you be holy, right? It's a God's will question. Uh, some translations say it's God's will that you be sanctified. Some translations say it's God's will that you set apart different, that's what the word means, that you would be different than those around you. I believe there should be a difference about you as you go through this pandemic time. And this verse, again, especially appropriate in the middle of a pandemic, just four days away from Thanksgiving, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, rejoice always, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So as the self-help books are flying off the shelves, your neighbors are, I believe your neighbors are looking, right? People are looking for answers, that, that, that people are looking for us more than you realize. And so when they look at us, what are they going to see? And what is God's will for us at this critical time in our neighborhoods, on the blocks in which we live, at work, our home, and the people around us? Uh, the writer of these words, the Apostle Paul, says they should say three things. They should see joy in us. I have to tell you, as I go through the days, I'm not always happy, but I have joy, right? Joy is a deeper abiding sense that somewhere God is in control and on the throne. And, and I'm not always happy. My wife, right? Mary, am I always happy? 
No. Usually all of us, as we go through the course of the day, we have moments where we struggle, where it's not easy. But people should see joy in us. So there's this great story that's told about the Apostle Paul. I'm going to use this as an example from Acts 16. I'm just going to tell the story. So in Acts 16, the Apostle Paul is on this missionary trip in the city of Philippi. And he goes there to preach, and he meets with great success, right? It's a great missionary journey. And this one woman is converted who, uh, Paul says, makes her money as a fortune teller. Now, what's significant about that story is this woman was a slave, which means she was owned by someone else, which means everything she received as a result of her fortune telling, the profits for that, went not to her, but to her master. So the owner of this woman finds out that my servant slave has been going to hear this guy preach by the name of the Apostle Paul. And he finds out that she's converted. And his first concern is that her, his income is going to be disrupted. This woman I've been making money from is not going to be doing that particular, is not going to be in that particular line of work anymore. So as a result of that, he arranges for the Apostle Paul to get arrested. Paul is thrown into prison. He's beaten without a trial. So this is what happens. Instead of him going in complaining, instead of going in and saying, God, where are you in the middle of all this? Woe is me, which we all would be tempted to do. Here's what he does. He decides to put 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 into practice. I don't think he looked up 1 Thessalonians 5.16 because I don't think it was written for this. But this had something to do with the kind of teaching that Jesus engaged in. And Paul knew that teaching. So he made this decision to rejoice always. So he's in this prison cell in Philippi with bloody feet probably bound in the stocks. And instead of complaining, he starts to sing. Can you imagine? His song eventually morphs into a prayer. And in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, as the story is retold, at midnight in the cell block of this prison in Philippi, a prayer meeting breaks out. Right? People start to pray. It is simple, I imagine. It is powerful. It is real. And this amazing thing happens at this point. Right there in the middle of this worship, praise, experience to God, and an earthquake happens. That's my earthquake. I could do a lot better job. An earthquake happens. And this earthquake shake, shakes open the doors of the prison, and Paul goes out of the prison doors, and he finds his jailer there ready to kill himself. Because right as the jailer... In a Roman society, the way it worked, if your prisoners escape, they have to haul somebody else into jail. Somebody has to pay the price. He did not want that to be him. So the jailer is, is ready to kill himself, and Paul stops him. And Paul shares the story of Jesus with him. And, in, and the jailer ends up falling on his knees, asking Jesus into his heart. He then takes Paul home. What a story, right? from throwing him in jail to taking him back to his home, washing his wounds, feeding him, and at the end of the meal, the jailer and his whole family is baptized. Come on, can you applaud? That's an incredible story. So self-help books are good, right? I'm not against self-help books. I've read a few of them in my life. But I have to tell you, the joy that Jesus can give you is even better. Right? We need something deeper in these times. So another thing our neighbors should see in us right now particularly is the people that pray, Paul says continually, pray continually. This, these are the things that mark us as believers, that make us different. Pray continually. We see it in the story we just read. So does that mean we have to join a monastery? I hope not. I'm a married man and I enjoy being married. It doesn't mean you have to, to join a monastery. Here's what I mean, it believes what it means to pray continually. It means making prayer a part of your lifestyle. 
It's just a part of who you are as a believer in Jesus. You're driving down the road, you see an accident, the first thing you should do is start to pray. Do you do that? It's just a great spiritual discipline. You see, you know, I see somebody stopped by a policeman, I pray for them. I pray for the whole situation. It's part of my lifestyle. It means instead of being afraid, you pray. It means instead of complaining, you pray. It means instead of gossiping about a situation, you pray. You pray. It means whatever we do, we pray. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, whatever you do, um, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, he says, do it all for the glory of God. Everything that you do, pray. I told somebody this story earlier. Uh, I was blessed. My six-year-old grandson is learning to read. I, I told a couple people this story. And he's learning to read. And my, my son-in-law passes his room on, on Tuesday morning. He passes Jackson's room. And he looks in there. And it's, Jackson gets up really early in the window. And he's, he's over by the window trying to get whatever light he can get from the street light, because that's how early the boy gets up. He stays in my house. I wish he would stay in bed a whole lot longer. But he's by his window with the street light streaming into his room, and he does not know that his father is watching him, and he's there sitting on a little stool with his play chair with his Bible open to Genesis chapter 1, reading the Bible. Nobody told him to do that, right? But he's learning to read. And this, these kind of things are a part of his lifestyle. So it's more than just saying grace over meals, that's important. But it's thanking God for your, for your wife, for your husband. Thanking him for the roof that's over your head, right? That you have food on the table. It's thanking him for the strength to do set up here on Sunday mornings. Uh, you know, I, I say this all the time, but Mary knows how I feel. I'm just so grateful. For, for all of you who serve so willingly. And then I want you to notice what this verse says. It's not just thanking him when the times are good. But it's thanking him even in bad situations. Paul says in all circumstances we learn to thank God. When times are good, when times are bad. That is not easy to do. I get it. I confess to you my own problems, how my wife helps me to keep my focus where it should be because it gets off sometime. It's not easy to do. Don't beat yourself up if you are struggling right now a little bit. All of us are. You know what? I, I love the scriptures that Callie read for us this morning. God loves us anyway. He does. He remembers that we're made from mud. I think that's what it said, that we're dust. He loves us. So it's not easy. I understand the challenges we're living with. But it's what, how we respond, giving thanks in all circumstances is one of the things that marks us as being different. Right? These are things we should learn. Be joyful always and um, pray, you know, pray in all circumstances. Now it doesn't mean the circumstances are good, right? It means that God is good, amen? Can you all say really, really loud so people can hear you online? God is good. God is good. Say it even louder so the neighborhood can hear you. Come on. God is good. God is good. So can I say that as a person who's experienced personal illness at times and have experienced the death of people who were close to me? And I have to tell you, through all of it, God has been good, right? A lot of times, you know, I have been more aware of that goodness in those times, even than when times are good. Sometimes when times are good, we forget. But in the difficult times, I'm like, oh, God, I don't know how I would do this without you. So here's how one Bible commentator um, says this. It actually was a commentary from Acts chapter 16 in describing what Paul went through in that story I told you in the prison cell in Philippi. He said the reason why Paul could do that is he had an absolute confidence in the invincibility of the Christian message, right? 
he knew that, was, that there was power. As he was in jail, he knew that because he was in jail, the gospel itself was going right into Caesar's household. household. He knew, in, I like that, in the invincibility of the Christian message. Uh, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, this pandemic is not going to prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Right? The absolute invincibility of the Christian message. Right? We're going to make it. Paul knew, we know, that God, Paul knew that God loved him. He knew that Jesus himself took the worst things that life could throw at anybody. Torture, punishment, death. And that Jesus, as a result of that, rose from the grave. And that same Jesus who rose from the grave promised us as we walk with him through difficulties in life, he, we will rise with him as well. Come on, cheer for that. Come on. We can rejoice in all circumstances because we know we have a God who loves us. And like I said, don't be afraid if you're struggling in this time. He loves us warts and all. He knows your good times. He knows how you struggle. And he loves you. And because of that, we can give thanks. We can give thanks in all circumstances. God is, in, God is sovereign. God is in control. He is still on the throne. Um, you know, sometimes I say to people, some people uh, say, how you're doing with the pandemic or how's your church doing? And in my weak moments, I just say, you know what? You know, we're surviving. We're doing okay. Right? I don't want to survive. I want us to thrive. Amen? Even in difficult times, God can help us thrive. He's in control. He's got this. More than that, he's got you. In the words of Paul in Romans chapter 8, he who gave up his own life, God who gave up his own life, his own son for you, how will he not graciously give us everything we need? Even in this hard time. There is, uh, there is the, real, the real key for finding God's will, right? Thankfulness, joy in the middle of this pandemic. But the last three words are the most important in these verses, the last three words of our text say that joy, that thankfulness is found in where? Christ. It comes in Christ. It comes from your relationship with him. It doesn't come from circumstances. Our circumstances are horrible, right? As a society, as a nation, so many people are struggling. Thank God, right, for how he has provided us as individuals. I love that reading of Psalm 91. God's provision is real. I thought to myself, man, I'm going to be reading that every day for the next few weeks. God's provisions are real. But our circumstances are difficult. But circumstances change, amen? Our, our, our sense of joy in all this, it's not found in good health, right? It's not found in good health. There are plenty of people who have great health today. Who, there were plenty of people who had great health before this pe pandemic hit who are miserable, right? It's not found in health, it's found in Christ. It's found in Christ. It's not the amount of toys we possess, the amount of things we possess, the amount of money we have. Unhappy rich people are proverbial. They are some of the most unhappy people imaginable. Have any of you watched the Senate hearings with the guy from Twitter this week? The man looks miserable. Pray for him. Pray for him. I'm probably going to be censored as a result of saying that, but pray. It's found in right relationship with God and with Jesus, and that is what is available to us in Christ. So I'm going to close this in a word of prayer. The worship team can come up. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you that there is joy that goes deeper than happiness, Lord, there have been times, Lord, I have been unhappy, but the joy has not disappeared. The joy of having a relationship with you, knowing that God loves me, he has a plan and purpose for my life, for our church, for our community through these difficult times. Father, would you have your, your way with us? May your, will, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done in our own lives. Lord, we are confident that everything you have planned for us, Lord, will be accomplished. You are a faithful and good God, and we love you this morning. And all God's people said very loudly, Amen. Amen.
for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As we uh, get ready for Thanksgiving, some of us are going to meet with our families, and some of us are not. Uh, some of us are going to have a big party, some of us are going to have small parties. Uh, but whatever happens, the choice is the same. Am I going to give thanks in all circumstances, or am I going to complain in all circumstances? God's will for you is to give thanks in all circumstances. Like Pastor Doug said, those three important words, in Christ Jesus. That's how we're going to be able to give thanks, is to stay close to Jesus, be in him. Stand. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Side you open up my eyes. 
As we close, we're going to do something a little bit different. I want to. I want you to think of something you are tempted to be anxious about. I just want you to picture yourself holding it in your hand. Just do this. Picture what you are tempted. Maybe you're not. Maybe you have no anxiety at all. But picture what you're tempted to be anxious about. And I want you to receive this benediction. Go forth releasing that anxiety to God. If you put it in your hand, just raise it up. Go forth releasing that anxiety to God. Go forth with prayer and petition. Choose to go forth this morning with thanksgiving. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, be yours in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.